Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and welcome to our Konzatark here pre-release guide. Now that all the cards have been released, we can take a look at what you should expect from your pre-release experience. We're going to be talking more general strategy here. If you want to know about specific cards to look out for, check out our spoiler series and our best of the rest series. Here, we just want to help you answer the question, what clan should you play? Get hyped for cons, everyone. This is going to be awesome. If this is your first pre-release event, I'm going to quickly cover what you should expect from it. Each player will choose a clan to represent before the event starts. You'll then be given a pre-release box. Inside of the box will be five packs of cons of Tarkir and a seeded pack based on the clan you chose. Inside of this seeded pack, you'll receive a promotional rare card in the clan you chose, along with a number of commons and uncommons that all fit within the three colors of your clan. So basically you get a teamer pack or obzan pack or whatever your clan is. You open up all your cards, the seated pack and the five cons packs, and you make a deck out of just those cards to play with for the rest of the event. Sealed decks must contain a minimum of 40 cards, which is also the ideal number. Try not to put in more than 40 cards unless you pulled literally every single good card ever in your clan, then go nuts. Normally I would suggest running 17 lands, but because this is a 3 color format and it's a bit slower than normal, I think the magic number for lands is 18. You need to be able to gain access to all your colors, and most of your multicolor lands in this limited format are slow. Not only that, but you really just need 3 lands by turn 3 so you can lay down a morph creature. That's the general consensus on where you want to be when it comes to your mana base. The last thing I'll say about the logistics of the pre-release is that you aren't guaranteed any promo in particular. Instead of just getting any rare in your colors, each clan has 8 possible promos that could be in your seated pack. They haven't officially released the list of what they are and they said they won't because they want it to be a mystery. All I know for sure as of right now is that all cons are possible to open, in addition to all the intro pack rares and ascendancies. I've also seen Icy Blast for Teamer and Master of Pearls for Jeskai. Beyond that, we're going in blind here. So what clan should you play? The set is a little different than most. Because it's clan based, they wanted to make each clan have a distinct personality and playstyle. They absolutely accomplished this. This is going to help when deciding which clan you should play. Let's go over what you have available. The Obzan are the white, black, and green clan. Their mechanic is called Outlast. It lets you pay some mana and tap the creature as a sorcery to put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Many of these Outlast creatures receive benefits once they have counters on them. Since they can continue to put counters on themselves and improve their board position and power as the game goes on, the Obzan are clearly the late game control clan. They do have early creatures like Inok Bonkin and Herald of Anafenza, but look closely. These are not meant to be aggressive. They're meant to start stacking counters early so they can be effective mid-game while also giving benefits to the entire team. As far as synergy goes, the Obzan work really well with each other and it's pretty easy to take advantage of their abilities. Cards like Obzan Battle Priest, Obzan Falconer, and Longshot Squad are all examples of what you're going to be doing all game. Pumping your own stuff to the point where it just overwhelms the opponent. To do this, you need to be able to play for the long game. If you're the type of player who dislikes doing nothing for the first few turns of a game, do not play Obzan. They will not win quickly. If anything, you'll go to time more often than you'll win quickly. They really are the embodiment of endurance. As a player, you need endurance to play them, is basically what I'm saying. Just be ready for that, it's going to be that kind of grind. Next up are the Jeskai, the white, blue, red clan. This is one of the more difficult clans to get an accurate sense of where you want to be purely based on spoilers. I'll explain what I mean in a moment. Their mechanic is prowess. It buffs your creatures temporarily when you cast non-creature spells. The nice thing about this is that some of these prowess creatures have additional benefits that make pumping them worth it. In a normal white, blue, red deck, you'd expect it to be control based with many more spells than creatures. That cannot be further from the truth with the Jeskai. The vast majority of their watermark cards are creatures. Like, there are four non-creature Jeskai spells. Think about that. Don't worry too much though. There are plenty of neutral spells that you can work with. The point I'm trying to make is the Jeskai need non-creature spells to get full value out of their creatures. You're playing an early to mid game tempo strategy. 
You lay down some early threats, try to cast some non-creature spells for quick damage and value, and then disrupt your opponent as they try to catch you. I love the Jeskai for draft, but for a seal there is something you have to know. The synergy required to make this clan work really well is high. Compare them to the Obzan. The Obzan just outlast themselves and get bigger. They can become threats on their own. They're self-sufficient, in a sense. The Jeskai are not like that. The vast majority of their creatures' value comes with prowess. If you don't have a healthy amount of playable non-creature spells, your own creatures are going to be lackluster. This is not me saying that you shouldn't play Jeskai, especially because the seated pack should help you out. What I am saying is that you need to make sure you focus on non-creature spells and understand that they are a necessity to win with this clan. You could very well end up cutting creatures that are perfectly fine for an additional couple and non-creature spells just for the synergy. Again, not trying to knock down the Jeskai. This is just me trying to help you out because I know a lot of you are going to play them and I totally support you. Just be sure to get enough non-creature spells. They end up being the cornerstone of your deck without you really even knowing it. The Sultai, or the Black Green Blue Clan, is basically crazy. Their mechanic is Delve, which lets you exile cards from your graveyard instead of paying mana to cast something, which means that filtering cards into your graveyard becomes a priority. A very important priority. Probably the top priority. With this in mind, remember that you have a 40 card deck. Milling yourself can be helpful. It lets you cast Delve cards on the cheap, and they usually end up being super powerful compared to what you paid for them. There is a long-term issue. Decking yourself becomes a problem if the game goes too long. Many of the Delve cards that have legitimate power are expensive. You're going to end up delving away 4-6 to six cards multiple times in a game. In a 40 card deck, that adds up so fast. The way I see it, the Sultai are basically the clan you go when you want to gamble. Do you want to mill yourself for half your deck before turn 5? Is that enough to push something out to win? Are you willing to take that chance? If you are, you're going to have a great time with the Sultai. Despite what you may think, they are an early to mid game aggressive clan. Don't let their mana cost fool you. They filter cards into the yard and then play huge stuff before you play huge stuff. As far as enablers and synergy is concerned, there are more than enough cards in the set that enable delve shenanigans. In your seated pack alone, I guarantee you get at least two to three different ways to mill yourself, so that isn't going to be the problem. The problem is that you need to realize, in the end, you're a mid-game aggressive strategy. You don't want to sit around to fight the Obzan late game. The only clan you really need to outlast <laughs> is the Mardu, who we'll talk about in a second. Cards like Hooting Mandrills and Sultai Scavenger are meant to be cheated out early and provide the beats. So let them beat and pray that you don't die before you overwhelm your opponent with zombies, snakes, naga, and I don't know, like treasure cruises? Next up is the Maradu or the Red White Black Clan. They're all about aggression. It's shown in their mechanic raid. A lot of their cards have additional benefits if you attacked with a creature this turn. They really couldn't incentivize attacking any more than they are. The pillars of the clan, Zergo, Helm Smasher, and Ankle Shanker, show it best. They both have haste, they both have insane benefits when you're attacking. It's just, if you're playing Mardu and not swinging with everything you have on every single turn, you're probably doing it wrong. While this may sound like a generalization, I'm not kidding. The Mardu have a distinct advantage early game against all the other clans. No other clan does what they do in the first three turns of the game. It's really not even close. The board presence that the Mardu can create on a whim is impressive. What I'm trying to say here is that the clan is all about attacking and you need to understand that the Obzan aren't going to be the only ones looking to outlast you. All other clans move slower than the Mardu. If you're okay with laying down your entire hand and just going all out every single game, then Mardu is definitely the clan for you. Even if you wanted to slow down a bit, the clan doesn't really have any late game creatures. The highest mana cost for a creature in the clan is 6. Ponybag Brigade is the most expensive creature card in this clan. The goblins this guy can create aren't meant to be used for defense. They're meant to end the game. That's what your whole clan does. I really cannot stress enough that when you play Mardu, you're trying to end the round in 5 minutes. Just saying, this clan is outrageously more aggressive than any other. It's, it's kind of nuts. The last clan we're looking at is the Teamer, or the green, blue, red best clan ever. 
Their mechanic is ferocious. When you control a creature with power 4 or greater, you get some pretty sweet benefits from your spells. You know how up to this point I was telling you how each clan did something well in a very extreme sense? The team are all right in the middle. They have early game threats, disruption to stall for late game, card draw, you get the point. The best thing the teamer do is control four power creatures. Honestly, that's their game plan. They're a mid to late game creature based strategy. At the end of the day, the Obzan will end up bigger than the teamer, but until then, no other clan really has the raw power to stand up to them without needing some type of combat trick or disruption. Granted, disruption and removal do exist and are plentiful. The teamer seem like the clan that can just keep dropping creatures and ask, can you deal with this? This clan is much more about quality of creature than quantity. It's important to understand that when you play a teamer, you're really just playing your curve. You have stuff to do at every point in the game. You aren't starting the game like, oh man, I need to win by turn five. No, it's not like that. You also don't have to outlast every game to a certain point. You really do just have stuff to do all the time. This is the jack of all trades clan. If you don't want to go to an extreme in this pre-release, the teamer are as middle of the road as you can get. Okay, let's review. The Obzan are super late game. You won't win quickly, but they get out of control after a few turns if they aren't dealt with. You play this clan if you like long games and an eventual sense of soul crushing victory. The Jeskai are super complex. Imagine is it, but with even more synergy required. If you like intense interactions between your cards, playing tempo based strategies, or just potentially coming out of nowhere with a complete blowout, the Jeskai might be for you. They're definitely the most complicated clan to play in the pre-release. If you play Sultai, you better be ready for some volatile games. Rolling a die to decide the winner might not be such a bad idea sometimes. Disclaimer, we at the Mana Source do not endorse using dice, coins, or other non-game methods to determine the outcome of a game as this is a tournament rules violation and grounds for disqualification. You're going to go crazy every single game milling a bunch of your library and hoping not to deck yourself before laying down a ton of chimps and zombies and basically scaring your opponent to death. Welcome to the Soul Tie. Mardu is aggro. I can't really say much more than that. If you like being the aggressor, there are no other options for you. The Mardu are clear front runners when it comes to early game victories. There's no denying that. If you like to smash faces as soon as the game starts, this is where you want to be. If you didn't particularly like any of those clans, teamers for you. They provide you with a little bit of everything. There's no real extreme here. Quality creatures like the Obzan and Sultai, synergistic spells like the Jeskai, and some early game action like the Mardu. They aren't going to be better than any of these other clans at one particular thing, but they do give you a nice middle ground if you can't make a decision. With all of this said, if you still haven't chosen what clan you want to play, the most pre-ordered clan so far is Obzan. After that, Teamer, Mardu, Jeskai, and Sultai in that order. Because the format is so slow, players think that the Obzan can outlast anyone, hence why they're so highly pre-ordered. Because I can't guarantee that you'll get the promo you want, it's quite difficult to suggest an objectively best clan, but all I can say is that I would put Obzan, Mardu, and Teamer on roughly the same level because they require less synergy to be effective. Their cards are more self-sufficient, if that makes sense. I know this video was long, but I just had to tell you everything I knew about the clans. If you made it this far, can you leave a smiley face or a heart in the comments so I know that you love me as much as I love you? Please, thank you. Do you know which clan you're picking now? If you're still having trouble, comment down below and I'll help you out. It's kind of what I do for every pre-release. I'll pick for you. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Kanzatark here spoiler information you could ever need. This is the Manasaurus. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.